Hi everyone, my name is Tori, this is Love Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some groveling romance recommendations to share with you. So someone asked, when I was asking for video ideas, someone said, what about groveling? Do more groveling. And I'm like, you know what? I got six to share with you. So in this video, we're going to be talking about six groveling romances that I just thought that the groveling was amazing. I have done this video before. I will link it in the cards and in the description box below. Pretty sure I don't have any crossover. These are all pretty new books that I've read. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in. The first one I have is a new read and that is The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This is an oldie. I understand that, but I recently just read it. Wow. This book had really, really, really really good groveling. I think that Logan had to really, really grovel to get Grace back. I think that it worked, obviously, because it's an H-E-A and they ended up together. But basically, they start this kind of friends with benefits situation. It's more sexual than anything. It's really just them having a good time. And it comes out that um, Logan had feelings for another person and he's basically trying to get over her. So Grace kind of felt like she was a rebound. And I mean, don't get me wrong like that. I don't think that was his intention, but she definitely got, she definitely felt that way. And I, she's validated for feeling that way, but she goes to Paris to visit her mom for the summer. So they take months apart. She comes back and she is this brand new person. And, you know, Logan's like, I feel something for you. I want to explain what happened. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to get, have a rebound with you. That's not what it was. Um, and I want to explain myself. And she like gives him a list of things to do to grovel, to do it. And he does everything without question. He's like, I screwed up and I need to get back in her good graces. And I really enjoyed the groveling in this one. Um, this is not my favorite of the off campus series, but I thought the groveling was really, really good. So I think that you can go ahead and pick this up as a standalone. You don't have to read the series as a, you know, whole or go through an order, but I would highly recommend this one because the groveling was a plus in my opinion. The next book I have is Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. And I know this one is going to be like not for everyone, which fair enough, it's not gonna be for everyone. So basically this is a marriage in crisis. Both of our characters are separated after being married. They're not divorced yet, but they're going through a divorce and our main male character is in an accident and he loses his memory. I think it's like the last three years or two years. So in the hospital, you know, our female character is labeled as his emergency contact. She shows up and he's like, what are you doing? Come over here, give me a hug. Like, what are you doing? And she's like, um, what? Like they both were seeing other people. The reason why he has to grovel in this book is obviously because of the thing that ended their marriage. There is trigger warnings for cheating. There's trigger warnings for loss of a child, like for miscarriage. There's, there was a lot. There's a lot that they have to go through. Now, I personally think that the groveling should have lasted a little bit longer, just a little bit, but I still really enjoyed the romance. I really enjoyed the groveling. It made sense. Um, our male character definitely needed to grovel and you can see that he really does feel remorseful. He feels remorseful for the things that happened once he finds out. He does slowly start to get his memories back which also becomes a big thing but I think that if you're trying QB Tyler for the first time I feel like this is her least taboo book in my opinion <laughs> I think that you know all of her other stuff is super you know big age gap stuff like this but I think this marriage in crisis marriage in trouble is a really really good one and I'm glad they were able to reconcile and be together because I really, really enjoyed it. The next one I have is Final Offer by Lauren Asher. So this is a new release. This is the third book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. And this one is a thick book, y'all. I know a lot of people will have their opinions and that's totally fine. But for me, the thickness of this book was warranted. Cal and Elena have a lot to work through. Like when I mean a lot, it is years and years and years of stuff. And it's not just between them two. She has her own stuff, but Cal has a lot. So this book um, has a lot of trigger warnings for substance abuse, alcohol, alcoholism, addiction, stuff like that, talks of all of that. And it is something not to, to be taken lightly. It's throughout the whole book. Cal is really, really struggling with sobriety, what he's doing, his addiction to alcohol. There's talks of, you know, past addictions with pills and alcohol and stuff like that. And, you know, it's it's very real. And I will say that it's very real. And obviously all of that sobriety and the sobriety issues and his addictions led to him and Alana not being together in the past and so this is kind of their second chance romance he has to, he has to go to this house where he grew up in um part of the will this the whole series is about the will that the grandfather leaves them and each brother has to do something to get their inheritance basically 
Um, and so he has to go back to his childhood home, but Alana's living there. Um, the grandfather said that Alana can keep the house and stay there. Um, there is a child in the mix with all of that, and it becomes very, like, messy because they don't want, you know, the child to see everything, but also Cal's trying to fix himself for Alana, but they have to talk things out, and like I said, it's angsty, it's messy, but I think that the groveling that he does it really shows and the groveling is different than what you might seem like in some of these other books it's groveling as in like I'm gonna fix my myself I'm gonna step away and it's gonna take time but I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna come back and show you I did it and I feel like that is like the ultimate groveling and I loved it I thought Cal is an amazing character him and Lana they're I'm I'm really glad they got their romance at the end of it and I really really loved it the next book I have is on Dublin Street by Samantha Young so this is an, a really old book and I recently just read it I loved it I started crying at the end of this book so in this book we have Jocelyn she goes by Joss and she meets Brayden Carmichael Brayden is this super billionaire he's a billionaire I mean are we surprised I love a billionaire now I will say the groveling isn't super strong in here um it's more like there's a fine line between like pining and groveling but there's something that happens at the end like not Oh, well, I guess you could say third act breakup, like when they finally decide to be together. But what makes this so emotional to me is both the characters have a lot of past things that they have to get through and go through and work through together. And I think like it works out so well that they just are naturally kind of like working through this. And this one thing like stops them. It's obviously a big deal. I'm not going to say what it is, but, you know, Brayden has to do a little bit of groveling to show really how much he's going to be there for Joss. And I'm trying not to give it a lot of things away if you can't tell. So I'm kind of being very vague. I apologize. But, you know, there's things that, you know, he has to work through for her and has to talk through with her. And he's trying to do it in, <laughs> he's trying to do it in the way that he thinks is best. That's not always the case. Um, you have meddling sisters in here. Um, I thought it was great. I love a billionaire romance. I just, I really love this one. This one was really good. The next book I have is Could Have Been Us by Corinne Michael. So this one, the groveling is not as much as like, I don't know, Twisted Love by Anna Wong. Like, I feel like that groveling was amazing, but I've already put that in a romance recommendations video. But for this one is more of second chance groveling. So both of our characters, um, well, it's, it's like a best friend's brother type thing. So our female character, her brother's best friend, you know, they kiss when I think she's 18 and he's a little bit older and he kind of just like goes away and like doesn't really you know, say anything after that. And she's like, oh my God, what the heck happened? Like, why would you do that? So when he comes back in her life, she's like, no, 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 no. Like, I know we're meant to be together, but you're going to have to do some things to fix all of the stuff because you've, you've, you've done a lot and you've, you know, made a mess of things. Right. But also it's the whole thing with the brother being the best friend's brother. And, you know, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I personally really love this. I listened to the audio and I think it was really, really good. I think Corinne Michaels knows how to write an angsty, small town, really comforting romance. I think that's her like niche and she does it really, really well. And I thought this one was, it's not my favorite in the series, but I thought this one was done well enough that I would love to recommend it. Also, it's brother's best friend, second chance, like some of my favorite tropes. I'm just throwing them out there definitely check this one out. And the last book I had to share with you is Bring You Back by Ava Hunter. So I recently read this series by Ava Hunter. It is a new one and she is a new to me author and I actually really like this. So this is a marriage in crisis. Would you say marriage in crisis? Yeah, marriage in crisis, marriage in trouble. Basically we see throughout this whole series, this is book four. You don't technically have to read them in order, but I mean, it's always great because you see kind of like the start of what happens with Jace and how he starts gambling away money um, and his wife uh, Emmy Lou is not happy and I will say this is probably the most small town of all the books in the series and she basically is like I'm leaving like you're you told me you stopped told me you had this handled and now it's all coming back up again and I don't trust you you're not talking to me or anything like that and I this is not my favorite book in the world but I think that the groveling happens when they slowly find their way back to each other like he is really being the uh, man that she wants him to be and it's not like he's doing it in a fake way he's doing it in a way that he's like being open and honest and real with her and I personally really enjoyed that I like that aspect of it I love the time that they spent together where they really got to work through with a lot of the things that they just never talked about in their marriage and for me I thought it was really 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 good and I thought that you know, Jace was being open and honest. Emmy Lou was being open and honest. Now the third act breakup I thought was stupid and it made me so mad, but I would, would recommend it for the groveling. Would recommend it for the groveling. But that is all the groveling romance recommendations I have to share with you. Let me know if you have any in the comments down below for me. 
for the emoji. What kind of emoji? Do the holding your hand up, like holding your hand up like you have a question emoji. Cause like we all love groveling, right? We all love groveling cause that's one of our favorite things to read in romance. But that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content from me. As always, I hope you're living a novel life and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.